Well, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. It is Monday, May 16th, praise the Lord, and we're almost halfway through this year. I want to tell you, welcome to the word that worked, because Helen said it right. We believe on this station. When you work the word of God, the word of God will work for you. Well, last week I introduced you to an awesome evangelist, and I told you that she would be having her own show. So today it is not Dr. Marshall for real. It is me introducing the woman of the hour. Amen. The woman of God. She is going to come with us in a, to us in her very own way. And every third Monday, get ready, get ready. You can bet you're going to get a teaching from the historical aspect as well as the current relevant aspect of the word of God. I want to introduce to some and I want to present to others, none other than the guest today. And she's really not a guest because she's hosting her show and that's evangelist esther j ross god bless you god bless you woman of god how you doing hello dr marshall thank you so very much and i just want to tell everyone that i thank god for mdl ministries and this network the word that works network and i'm so happy to be in the family be a part of the programming so today i definitely look forward to the message all right, and I'm looking forward to it because I'm going to do what? Get out the way, as the old folks say. All right, go ahead now. Uh, Dust in the store, work it out. All right, talk to us today about what you're going to be bringing and uh, what they can look forward to in the future, okay? All right. I always want to make sure that we go back to the historical part, and Dr. Marshall Lee just said a little bit about that. What I'm going to talk about today is taking us to the beginning. Genesis 1. But before we go there, what I want to talk about is before we got the Biblos, which the meaning of that word is the book, the Greek word Biblos, is the word presented on papyrus paper. And that paper was a thick material like paper. And it was rolled into scrolls. And that's how we got the word. In Exodus 3, God began having a communication with a Hebrew man, an Israelite man named Moshe, Moses. And he began giving him the word. So that word communicated into the first five books of the Bible. It's called the Torah. And in Greek, it's called the Pentateuch. So we're going to go into the beginning of those words and what God said, and what God meant. And his infallible word cannot be questioned because when God says it, it settles everything. In Genesis 1, we hear the words, in the beginning, God, in the beginning, everything was created by God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was, was void, had no form, and it was dark. And God, out of that darkness, created light, said, let there be light. And there was light. Anything that God places his word on, there is going to be a change. So after this, each day for five days, and then part of the sixth day, God said, let there be. Whatever God called forth, it came forth. On the sixth day, God changed his words and he said, let us make, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them and gave them dominion. Bless God. And I like that part because I also enjoy going to John 1 verses 1 through 3. Because it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and nothing that was made was made without him. That is our Messiah. That is Yeshua or Jesus. And whatever your preference is, let me say this to you. I believe 
in the word that I teach, which is God's truth with free will. You go right ahead and whatever you choose to believe, whatever you choose to say, your language is fine with me. You have a free will to do it your way. But what I want you to know is in the beginning, there was a language called Hebrew and you can find every one of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet if you go to Psalm 119. So I know the language meant something to our father because it placed it, he placed it right there for us to see. But again, when this was done and the word didn't become flesh until later, but the word was with God creating us, let us make. And in his image, we were all made. Male and female, we were created. And what I want us to go back to is that word dominion. In the beginning, there wasn't woman greater than man and there was not men greater than women. We were together. It was dominion. And on that sixth day, when God finished everything, I like these words. He said it was all very good. Don't you know when you are with God, you are very good? Everything about your identity is very good. So when we get back to God and walk in a born again condition, we live a life that's very good because we allow him to be in us and we place ourselves in him. Glory to God. So in Genesis 2, we begin. And what does God say? After he finished everything that he created, he rested on the seventh day. Not because God needed rest, because surely he does not need rest. But to let us know, don't work so much that you don't take a rest. You should have a rest day. And on that seventh day, he sanctified it. So that is why on the seventh day, even now, we rest. It's sanctified. We honor God on that day. The Lord God decided when he created the man that he would also make sure that he had a place to live. So he created a garden home. He put together this beautiful garden home eastward in a city called Eden. And sometimes we say the Garden of Eden so much, we don't realize that Eden was a city. There you go. There were a few cities and there was a, a riverbed that came out of the garden and it went into four riverbeds. So there was so much that surrounded that beautiful garden. Before God created woman, Man only had a relationship with the animals that God created. And the man named every one of those animals. Everything around him was beautiful. The plants, trees, the fruit, being able to look up at a clear sky. Don't you know how wonderful it would be to see a sky without pollution? And that's what he had. Everything good, everything clean, everything beautiful. And when he looked around, do you know there were no pest, annoying pest in the way of insects? He didn't have to be concerned in that garden about a mosquito. He didn't have to be concerned about the humming of an annoying fly because pestilence was not on the earth at that time. Just a wonderful, glorious time. And all of the trees that were in the garden were pleasant to sight and good for food. But there was one tree that God placed a command on. God said to the man, on that tree, he was not to eat the fruit of. Now, it doesn't mean that the fruit was bad. We already recognize that every one of the trees was pleasant to sight and good for food. The command on this tree had to do with one thing, obedience or disobedience. That's it. So the fruit was not an apple. We don't need to identify the fruit. What we need to know is when God says, leave it alone, don't touch it, stay away from it, just do that. And that was what God said to the man. And as Adam looked around and saw that there was a mate for every animal, he knew there was no mate for him. And God, our father, who loves us in his infinite wisdom and in his kindness said that he was going to make a mate for the man. It is not good 
that man should be alone. So he made him a helper comparable to who he is. And believe me that to this day, say whatever you will, a woman is a wonderful help me to a man. So he created the woman out of the man, from within a man, that's where you get life. This day I want you to know it started with the rib, but now it starts with that life-bearing seed in a man. So from within a man, life will come forth. That rib, that, that wonderful rib came out of the body of that man. God did the first surgery. No problem with it at all. Had the man still all together. And the woman was taken to the side of the man by God. Now, you know, they were right there in the garden together. But isn't it wonderful that God joined them together? Brought her over to him. And the man said, because she's bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman. Oh, every time I hear about it, I get just a little bit excited because that kind of oneness you don't see anymore. Two become one. They became one flesh. And the word says, and they were naked and not ashamed. That's because flesh as we know it wasn't a part of their life. Glory to God. And we get to three. When we get into Genesis 3, it says the woman. So don't call her Eve before a time. Don't act as though her whole identity had to be with disobedience because it did not. This was a woman who was obedient. This was a woman who honored God. This was a woman who was in a oneness relationship with her husband. So I want to always remember that it says she is the woman. And Genesis 5 verse 2 says, and in the beginning, their name was Adam. She was the woman Adam. So when a woman takes a man's name, we don't think about it, but it came from Genesis 5-2. Nothing new under the sun. Everything we do, God has already done it before. Don't ever fool yourself. Oh, no, no, no. That's our father, which art in heaven. And he's a mighty good father. Yes, he is. So this serpent is the serpent of old. And when you go to Revelation 12-9, you find out that it wasn't a regular serpent. And you find out also that he had to be upright. When he began to talk and upright, he talked to the woman. That's Satan, the devil, serpent of old. And the first thing he wanted to tell her is the same thing that all those thieves and Satan sent people tell us right to this day. God didn't say it. And if he did say it, he didn't mean it. Let me add my own words to it. Because what they're telling you is they don't intend to obey it. So they're trying to get you not to obey it with them. So Satan said his little cunning and subtle words to her. Oh no, God didn't mean what he said. You can eat from the tree and you can be gods. Oh, and when she looked at the tree, something happened that had never happened before. It was a desire to make one wise attached to it. We cannot walk in our own wisdom. It's so much better to always walk in the wisdom of God. Oh, well, we praise the Lord for that word. It is time for our commercial. And we just want to introduce another aspect of this great woman's ministry to you. God bless you because she has a podcast. Hallelujah. Are you enjoying yourself today? Our host is Evangelist. Yes, it is Evangelist Esther J. Ross. And she has a podcast. Listen to this. Thank you, listening audience, for tuning in today to The Word That Works. You are listening to God's Truth with Free Will by none other than the founder of this program, the mighty woman of God, Evangelist Esther J. Ross. She will be hosting this program every third Monday of the month right here on The Word That Works. You can also tune in to her broadcast, KCHL Praise Radio, San Antonio, Texas. Texas Gospel Radio 1480. In times like these, Esther says that we need a word from the Lord. And the woman of God is an expert in the Greek and the Hebrew connotations of the Bible. We want you to know what God is saying in this hour. So make sure that you tune in. Don't you miss her broadcast. She will be here with you and I to tell us what thus says the Lord. 
And we want you to know that she is also an author. She's just not a TV host now and not just a, a radio host, but she is indeed an author. Destined to soar, an awesome book, as she takes us from generation, uh, gener Genesis, I'm sorry, to Revelations. This woman of God knows her stuff. Amen. Yes, she does. She knows her biblical history. We want to encourage you to get it from her. You can reach out to her at her email and, of course, her website, and you can obtain this book. She is at For God's Truth with Free Will at gmail.com. That is for God. For the number four, God's truth with free will at gmail.com. And furthermore, you can also listen to her, don't forget it, KCLHL, Praise Radio, San Antonio, Texas, Gospel Radio, 1480. God bless you. And now we return to our speaker, amen, to our host of this broadcast. Yes, indeed, Esther. Her name is Esther J. Ross. Amen. Amen. I am so glad that you're back with me. Now we're going to talk about this little cunning serpent and how he stood up and gave these words to the woman. And she began to listen. And as I said, that word desire, a desire to make one wise came. And so in her listening, she reached out and she took from the fruit. Even when she spoke with the serpent, she said, do not touch it. That was not the original word. It was do not eat from it. But sometimes when you talk to someone who has made you nervous, when it's something different going on that you've ever experienced before, things can happen and you may not really understand your situation the way that you did before. So she got a little confused, reached for the fruit and bit from it. But I want to tell you a little bit about her husband that was with her, Adam. She held her hand out. There the fruit was with the bite taken from it. And he did eat with her. Now I know everyone has a little bit of something negative and critical to say about Adam, but let me tell you about the man called Adam. If you cannot compare Messiah Yeshua to Adam, you cannot compare any other man who has ever lived with that man. Because he is the first Adam. And the last Adam is Messiah Yeshua. And if you go to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15 and 45, you will realize what you need to know about the first Adam and the last Adam. Adam was not deceived. 1 Timothy 2, 4, it was the woman that fell into transgression. He was not deceived. But what he did, he did for love. He didn't know what death was. And death is more than what we think. Death is separation from God. That's why when they ate, they didn't fall into the sleep that is only awakened by resurrection. They were just separated from God at that moment and did not know it. But this man, Adam, he didn't know what death was, but he knew how to take it on for the woman that he loved. Now we call the church, the messianic community, the bride. That's what we call it. And what did our Messiah do? What did our Redeemer do? He gave his life in the same manner that the first Adam gave his. Now we will recognize our Messiah, but we will not recognize Adam. It's so easy to condemn a man, but whenever we know that we have a Redeemer, Someone special, someone that has a connection of anointing. We find a reason to make sure that we elevate that person. But today I'm asking that you see Adam a little bit different. Don't criticize him. Don't put him down. Realize that in the beginning, all he knew was God. The only communication he ever had was with God. The communication the woman had was with God through her husband and communicating directly with her husband. So I can understand how when she got this new communication, she felt like she could just chat a little bit. But when you chat with the wrong somebody, oh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33 tells us, evil communication will corrupt good manners. And that's exactly what happened. After eating, 
Adam wanted to hide himself, but not before they sewed together some fig leaves. What a horrible experience to have fig leaves that cover so little now become your covering rather than your father in heaven. That was a sad experience. And God says, where are you to the man? Where are you? But he was hiding because he felt like he was naked. First time that he saw his flesh. God said, who told you you were naked? Did you eat from that tree? Then God spoke with the woman. And the woman gave her part. After Adam then accused her. The woman you gave me. Then the woman says, the serpent. And the serpent, the woman and the man got their punishment from God. Man was to work, till the ground. Woman, in childbirth, have labor. And the serpent was to eat the dust of the ground and then begin to crawl around on his belly rather than be upright any longer. Circumstances come when we don't obey the word of God. In Genesis 3.15, we get the understanding that one day we're going to have our Messiah come. And that son is going to, at that appointed time, get rid of Satan and all those who follow him. We also learn that in order that the man and the woman never touch the tree of life again, they're forced out of the garden. Why? Because if they go back to the tree of life, then they would live ultimately forever a life of sin. And God knew that he had already prepared for us to have life eternal if we would just go into our closet, our private place, and repent. He offered us the water for our immersion, baptism, and repentance for our restoration. Oh, it's a mighty good work when we talk about Genesis 3. Those angels with flaming swords were placed at the garden so that they could never enter again. And when we get into Genesis 4, it talks about the fact that the man knew the woman, knowing her in an intimate way, the flesh. And a child is born, Cain. Another child is born, Abel. Cain and Abel should have been able to get along really well. But Abel brought an offering to the Lord of his first, of his best, and God honored that. Cain brought an offering, but not the best, and it was not honored. Rather than do better, even after God talked to him and said, but if you do well, he chose not to do well. Instead, he went out into the field and he took the life of his brother. Satan wanted him and Satan got him. And when he came back, God wanted to know what had he done? So Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? For every believer, yes, we are our brother and our sister's keeper. Yes, we love one another. Yes, we want what's best for one another. No, we don't want to take anything from our brother or sister. If we see that they have done well, what we want to do is make sure that Satan does not come at the door, but that we go to God and give God our best instead of being jealous or envious at someone else who does their best. So when we end Genesis 4, we realize that Cain is taken out of the family of Adam. And that's why when you get to Genesis 5 and read the generations of Adam, because Cain took away the life of Abel and Abel could have no descendants and no generation. Cain is not included either. We must be careful. Years ago, those who were older would tell you, if you dig a ditch, dig two, one for them and one for you. Be careful when you want to get someone in trouble or you plot against someone because often it can boomerang right back at you. In Genesis 1, if we would just remember this, God creates. Create in a positive manner with God. 
Every day was and the evening and morning were a day. Don't you know God will take you from darkness to light? But the Gregorian calendar we under we are under takes us from light to darkness. That wasn't the way God planned it. It's the way we do it. But God's plan was to always take us from darkness to light. Genesis 2. Ah, that garden home. When you can live in that home that God plans for you. And there's no problem there. There's just peace and there's joy. And you can walk out and you can see all the creation of God and do another day. Genesis 3 tells us, stay away from the ways of Satan. Stay away from those who have ways of Satan. Get away. And if you need to, put on your running shoes. Run, run. Sometimes that's the best thing that an enemy can do. Put you in a position to run home, run to safety. In Genesis 4, learn. Don't be envious. Don't be jealous. Don't want what belongs to someone else. Know that God already has an appointed plan for you. God wants the very best for you. Always want to put your hands on God's divine plan. Put your thoughts and your heart into God's divine plan. And love one another. There is a saying when people say, I give you the benefit of the doubt. I never do that. I tell people, I give you the benefit of understanding. I want to understand your position. And there's another saying that goes, I love you to death. Oh no, I don't want to do that either. I love you to life, to life, to the glorious life of God. And there's a verse that I enjoy so very much in Proverbs 21 and 28. A false witness shall perish but the man who hears him will speak endlessly. Repetition is done often. Let's not repeat unless we know it's true. I love you. And I am so grateful for MDL Ministries. And I'm grateful for the Word That Works Network. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I hope you enjoyed Evangelist Esther J. Ross. Amen. God's word, God's word. You know, it is so important that we understand and that we utilize God's word. She is a woman who has studied intensively. And the word says, study to show thyself approved, the workman unto God, and need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you listen to this woman's broadcast, I promise you, for God's will, God's truth, with free will, you will be living liberated in the world word and be able to make better decisions amen amen don't forget our broadcast i want to tell you and don't forget to support our ministries amen we want you to know that we are we are this network and her network amen her show is support uh listening supported and we want you to know that you can feel free to do as god would give you to bring uh uh offerings or time uh not your tithes please take it to your church but to absolutely so into these ministries and become partners with us. This is only what you see. Our faces on this <laughs> on this screen, but we do a whole lot in the background. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for watching the word that works because we truly believe when you work the word of God, the word of God will work for you. Remember, God loves you and we do too. Be blessed. Have a fruitful week. Amen. Wow, what a great word. Please know that we love you with the love of God and there is absolutely nothing that you can do about it. You have been watching The Word That Works. Thank you. Good night.